Refutation of Obfuscation Part 3 The truth most Christians do not know about Christianity, the Holy Bible, and Islam. Is Jesus, God, or even, the begotten, Son of God? Jesus, peace be upon him, is one of mightiest prophets and messengers here are the proofs. Uh, but when they tried to arrest him, Jesus, they feared the multitudes, because they held him to be a prophet, Matthew 21 verse 46, people around Jesus, peace be upon him, considered him a prophet. B, and when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there, and coming to his own country he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished. And said where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not with honor except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do many mighty works there, because of their unbelief. Matthew 13 verses 53-58 Jesus, peace be upon him, clearly called himself a prophet. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran that Jesus, peace be upon him, said. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, I am the servant of Allah. He gave me the gospel and made me one of his prophets, the glorious Quran 1930. See- And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and worked before God and all the people. Luke 24 verse 19 D -dash, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples. Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Matthew 16 verses 13 to 14. Note that none of them said that Jesus is God. God Almighty says in the glorious Quran. Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who received the Gospel. Do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word, be, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is His. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of His creation. The Glorious Quran 4 171 E- -dash, And when He entered Jerusalem, all the city stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee, Matthew 21 verse 11. The people of Jerusalem, the eyewitnesses, called Jesus a prophet. The lifestyle of Jesus, peace be upon him. He was like all other mighty prophets and messengers of Almighty God. His lifestyle demonstrates that he was not more than a human being. Here are the proofs. A Jesus said to his disciples, Have ye here anything to eat? They, disciples, gave him, Jesus, a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he, Jesus, took it and ate before them, Luke 24 verses 41 to 43. God Almighty says in the glorious Quran. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger like other messengers. Just as death occurs to other messengers, it will occur to him as well. His mother, Mary, was a truthful and sincere woman. Both of them were in need of and used to consume food. How can they be gods when they were in need of food? Look, O oh messenger, and think about how I make clear to them the signs indicating my oneness and the falsehood of their extremism in attributing lordship to others besides me. Despite this, they do not recognize these signs. Then look and think about how they are misled from the truth, despite these clear signs indicating my oneness. The Glorious Quran 5 hours 75 minutes B- Jesus said, I thirst, John 19 verse 28, does God Almighty get thirsty? God forbid. C- On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he, Jesus, was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he, Jesus, went to see if he, Jesus, could find anything on it. When he, Jesus, came to it, 
He, Jesus, found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs, Mark 11 verse 13. Jesus, peace be upon him, was hungry, while God does not get hungry nor he needs to eat. Furthermore, Jesus, peace be upon him, did not know whether the fig tree was fruited or not, while God is all-knowing. The treasures of the gabe, unseen, are with Allah alone, no one besides him knows them. He knows all the created things in the land, such as animals, plants and inanimate objects. He knows whatever animals or plants there are in the sea. No leaf falls in any place, nor is there any seed of grain hidden in the earth, nor anything moist or dry, except that it is recorded in a clear book which is the preserved tablet. The Glorious Quran 659 D. He, Jesus, was asleep, Matthew 8 verse 24. But as they sailed he, Jesus, fell asleep, Luke 8 verse 23. And he, Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, sleep on a pillow, Mark 4 verse 38. Jesus, peace be upon him, used to sleep like every single human being, whereas God does not sleep. God Almighty says in the glorious Quran. Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. The Glorious Quran 2 255 E. This is the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. John 11 verse 35 This is a clear sign that he is a normal human being, because it is inappropriate for God to weep. The Decalogue, Ten Commandments As for the Ten Commandments are essential and must be followed according to the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. These commandments are recorded in both books, Exodus 20 verses 1 to 17 and Deuteronomy 5 verses 6 to 21. You shall have no other gods before God Almighty, Islamic monotheism. You shall make no idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. One day a certain ruler came to Jesus, peace be upon him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, Luke 18 verses 18 to 20. Jesus, peace be upon him, also gave a clear statement, he said. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Therefore, whoever will break one of these least commandments, and teach others to do so, neglecting the commandments, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever will do and teach them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 verses 17 to 20 It is so obvious that keeping the commandments is compulsory in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. But why it is neglected then? The man's so-called Saint Paul. Paul, whose original name was Saul, never met Jesus, peace be upon him, in his life at all. He came no less than fifty years after the ascension of Jesus Christ. In the beginning, Saul, Paul was involved in hunting, killing and persecuting the followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, because he believed they were heretics, Acts 22 verses 4 to 5. He had believed that his violent persecution of the church to be an indication of his zeal for his religion. Later, this man's so-called Paul reported having experienced a vision of Jesus, peace be upon him, that he has seen Christ like the other disciples did. And Christ appeared to him as he appeared to Peter, to James, to the twelve. Then he claimed to have the honor and opportunity to be an apostle from Jesus, but the fact remains that he appointed himself to be an apostle of Jesus, peace be upon him. 
Thereafter, this man asserted that he received the gospel neither from men nor from the disciples, but directly by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, he sat apart from people to write what he claimed to be the gospel of God. It was his own, but people naively believed him. Now, imagine Adolf Hitler, after killing thousands of Jews, said that while he was on the road to Berlin, he had a vision that he was appointed an apostle to the Jews. Then he wrote twenty books contradict significantly with the teachings of Moses, peace be upon him, which all the Jews must follow. Do you think that they will be following these books? Amazing! We do not understand how people just do not read history. The truth must be revealed, there are serious questions about the true origins of Paul's teachings posed by historical figures and some modern theologians also hold that the teachings of Paul differ markedly from those of Jesus Christ, as were found in the Gospels. They clearly admit that Paul differs from Jesus, peace be upon him, in terms of the origin of his message, his teachings and his practices. Some have even gone so far to admit that, due to these apparent differences in teachings, Paul was no less than the second founder of Christianity, Jesus being its first, and made a serious paradigm shift. Even, the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, and his direct followers believed that Jesus is the prophet and promised Messiah to the children of Israel. They focused their ministry on sharing this remarkable news and Jesus' teachings. However, Paul was the one who misrepresented the original teachings of Jesus. Let's see, Jesus, peace be upon him, said, to inherit the eternal life keep the commandments, yet, Paul said, no, the salvation is based on faith and not works of the law. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, I came not to break the law but to fulfill, yet, Paul said, no you do not have to follow the law. Jesus, peace be upon him, did not claim divinity ever, yet, Paul created a theological framework that Jesus is the Lord whom he must be worshipped. Renowned Christian scholars conceded that it was Paul alone who created a new religion by his vision of Jesus as a divine savior who died to save humanity. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Our God is one, yet, Paul said, No but three in one. Jesus, peace be upon him, was born miraculously, he had no father and his mother Mary, peace be upon her, was chaste and virgin, yet, Paul said. That Jesus, peace be upon him, was having biological lineage from David, one lineage from Nathan the son of David, and the other one from Solomon the son of David. Lies and Contradictions Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day, yet, Paul said that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. Muslims do circumcise. Jesus, peace be upon him, never claimed sacrificing himself for the sinners, yet, Paul said that Jesus volunteered to sacrifice himself to reconcile sinners with Almighty God. He preached his myth and deceptions, sadly. Today, Paul's epistles continue to be vital roots of the theology, worship and pastoral life in the Catholic and Protestant traditions of the West, as well as the Orthodox traditions of the East. And no less than 70% of the New Testament was from Paul not Jesus, peace be upon him. Question. Do you follow Jesus, peace be upon him, or Paul who opposed Jesus' teachings? Would you rely your eternity on Paul? Or Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? Chapter 3. The True Concept of God. Say, O Messenger, He is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except Him. Say, He is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in His essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Eklos, 112-1-4 What is the true concept of God? The belief in God is so essential for human beings. 
Thus, the human must believe in a deity, something that he will follow and cherish. He would refer to him as his method of life. He might even die for him and this is what's so-called worship. As for the true God, he is the creator who knows the hidden in concealed matters, because he is the all-knowing of the unseen. He has the power, the will, and he is the maker of all things that going according to what he wills. He is wise, does not do anything in vain, and he is just and because of his justice he rewards and punishes. He has a link to humans, he would not be their lord if he creates them and then abandons them. This is why he sends messengers to clarify the right path for them and to notify humans of his methods. The one who follows this method, will be worthy of getting the reward, paradise, and the one who leaves this method will be worthy of punishment, hellfire. Thus, if he is not capable of admitting them in either these places, paradise, hellfire, then he is not a god. Let's share a real short story regarding this subject. The Criteria of True God Yubay bin Kabi, the companion of the Prophet may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the polytheists, pagans, said to the Messenger of Allah, O Muhammad. Describe to us your Lord. In response, Allah the Almighty revealed. Say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Say, he is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Eklas, 112,1-4 In another narration, Abdullah ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet. May Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Jews came to the Messenger and among them their leaders Kabi ibn al-Ashraf and Huya ibn Aktab, and said to the Messenger. Describe to us your Lord who gave you the mission of prophethood and the Prophet recited to them this chapter. These narrations show that different people on different occasions had questioned the Messenger, peace be upon him, about the essence and nature of the God Almighty, and in every occasion. He would recite this chapter in response. At first the pagans of Quraysh asked him this question in Mecca, and in reply this chapter was sent down. Then, at Medina, sometimes the Jews, the Christians, and other people of Arabia, asked him this common question. These are the criteria of true God, his oneness, absolute eternity, does not beget nor was he begotten, and nothing can be ever like him whether in physical appearance or imagination. Who is Allah? God Almighty answers this question himself, he says. He is Allah, the one whom there is no true deity except him, he is the knower of the absent and the present, nothing is hidden from him. The benevolent of the world and the afterlife and their merciful, his mercy encompasses the worlds, the master, the pure and sacred from every deficiency, the faultless from every defect. The corroborator of his messengers with manifest signs, the observer of the actions of his servants, the Almighty whom no one can overpower. The omnipotent who controls everything through his power, the imperious. Pure and glorified is he from the idols and other things the idolaters ascribe to him. He is the creator who created everything, the originator of things, the fashioner of his creations according to his wishes. For him may he be glorified are the most beautiful names which contain his lofty attributes. Everything in the heavens and on earth glorifies him from every deficiency. He is the Almighty whom no one can overpower, the wise in his creation, legislation and decree. Al-Hashr 5922-24 The Glorious Quran 59-22-24 as a matter of fact, some of the biggest misconceptions many non-Muslims have about Islam have to do with the word Allah. For different reasons. Many people have come to believe that Muslims worship a different God than Christians and Jews, which is totally wrong. 
Allah is basically the Arabic word for God, and there is only one God, Creator. Undoubtedly, Muslims worship the God of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Jonah, John and Jesus, peace be upon them all. However, it is certainly true that Muslims, Jews, and Christians all have different concepts of Almighty God. For instance, Muslims, like Jews, reject the Christian beliefs of the Divine Incarnation and the Trinity. This, however, does not mean that each of these three religions worships a different God, because, as we have already said, there is only one true God, Creator. First of all, it is important to note that Allah is the same word that Arabic-speaking Christians and Jews use for God. If you pick up an Arabic Bible, you will see the word Allah being used where God is used in English. This is because Allah is a word in the Arabic language equivalent to the English word God with a capital G. Additionally, the word Allah cannot be made plural, a fact which goes hand in hand with the Islamic concept of God. It is interesting to note that the Aramaic word El which is the word for God in the language that Jesus spoke is certainly more similar in sound to the word Allah than the English word God. This also holds true for the various Hebrew words for God, which are El and Gila, and the plural or glorified form Elohim. The reason for these similarities is that Aramaic, Hebrew, and Arabic are all Semitic languages with common origins. It should also be noted that, in translating the Bible into English, the Hebrew word El is translated variously as God, God, and Angel. This imprecise language allows different translators, based on their preconceived notions, to translate the word to fit their own views. The Arabic word Allah presents no such difficulty or ambiguity. Since it is only used for Almighty God alone. Additionally, in English, the only difference between God, meaning a false God, and God, meaning the one true God, is the capital G. Due to the previous mentioned facts, a more accurate translation of the word Allah into English might be, the one and only God or, the one true God. Sadly, there are some people out there, who are obviously not on the side of truth, want to get people to believe that Allah is just some Arabian God. And that Islam is completely other, meaning which does not have common roots with Christianity and Judaism. However, to say that Muslims worship a different God because they say Allah is just as illogical as saying that Spanish-speaking people worship a different God because they say Dios. That French people worship another God because they use the word Dieu or that the Jews worship a different God because they sometimes call him Yahweh. Certainly. Reasoning in such way is quite ridiculous. Monotheism, the oneness of God Almighty. Beside Islam, both Christianity and Judaism claim to be monotheistic faiths. However, Islam teaches that both Judaism and Christianity have, in one way or another, nullified and distorted the pure belief in God Almighty by neglecting his true teachings and mixing them with man made ideas. Suffice it to say that just because someone claims being monotheistic Jew, Christian, or Muslim, that does not keep him away from falling into corrupt beliefs and polytheism. A lot of people claim to believe in one God even though they have fallen into acts of idolatry, paganism. Certainly, many Protestants accuse Roman Catholics of idolatrous, polytheistic, practices regarding the saints and the Virgin Mary. Likewise, the Eastern Orthodox Church is considered idolatrous by many other Christian sects because in much of their worship they use icons. However, if you ask a Roman Catholic or an Eastern Orthodox person if God is, one, they will definitely answer. Of course yes, but this claim does not prevent them from being creature-worshipping idolaters. The same goes for Hindus, who just consider their gods to be, incarnations, or, manifestations, of the one supreme God. Therefore, we are here in this chapter to present the true meaning of monotheism which has been taught by God Almighty and all his messengers. The real monotheism is to believe in God Almighty, Allah, alone with no partners, and to negate and reject all deities besides Him. Anything that has been worshipped or followed or obeyed or submitted to instead of God Almighty, Allah. The belief in the oneness of God Almighty, Allah, consists of three main categories. 1. To believe in the oneness of the Lordship of God Almighty, Allah, Tawhid Rubabiyah. Meaning, to believe in Allah as one and unique with regard to his actions such as that he is the creator absolute sovereign, the controller of the universe, the causer of life and death, and so on. Note. As for causing life and death. This function was given from God Almighty, Allah, 
by his permission to Jesus Christ, as a test to people, and it will be given to the Antichrist when he comes, as a test to people as well. However, this does not make any of the two to become a Lord worthy of worship nor to become God Almighty himself. In fact, whoever believes that there is any creator other than God Almighty, Allah, or any sovereign controlling the universe and disposing of its affairs other than God Almighty, Allah, has denied this. Aspect of Monotheism and Disbelief 2. To believe in the oneness of divinity of God Almighty, Tawhid Ulahiya. Allah. Meaning, to devote all acts of worship, in words and deeds, both inward and outward, to God Almighty, Allah, alone, accompanied by love and veneration. And not worshipping anyone or anything other than God Almighty, Allah, no matter who He is. In short, He, God Almighty, Allah, is the only one worthy of our worship. 3. To believe in the oneness of the divine names and attributes of God Almighty, Allah, Tawhid Asma, Washer Fat. This aspect of monotheism is based on two principles. A. Affirmation, affirming that which God Almighty, Allah, has affirmed for himself in his book or that his prophet, peace be upon him, has affirmed of his beautiful names and sublime attributes in a manner that suits the greatness and majesty of God, Allah, without distorting them, twisting their meanings, denying their reality or discussing how they are. B. Denial, denying that God Almighty, Allah, has any faults and denying any shortcomings which he has denied himself. In conclusion, the ultimate truth of Islam stands on solid ground and its unshakable belief in the unity of God is above reproach. Due to this, non-Muslims cannot criticize the Islamic doctrine directly but instead fabricate things about Islam that are not true so that people lose the desire to learn more.